Pastor Garen, thank you so much. What a blessing. Pastor Shelley and the team here, you guys have been incredible hosts and just, yeah, it's been, yeah I also feel a kindred, kindred spirit um, and it's great to, great to be here. If you haven't um, been here yet, my name is Jake and I brought a friend of mine, Marvin. Marvin's an intern at our church and he's been helping to minister and just um, be alongside here too. So um, yeah, it's been an incredible time so far. Looking forward to what the Lord wants to do this morning and also tonight. And so uh, if you have a Bible, open up to Isaiah, Isaiah 61. I'm going to pray real quick and just ask for the Lord's blessing on this time. And then we're going to go into this teaching and some ministry time. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, God, for this uh, just time of gathering together to worship you, to honor you. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. I thank you that your spirit is here in our midst. And Father, we just invite your spirit to move in this time. God, we invite your spirit to speak, Father, to lead this time. God, I pray for your holy angels to be sent on assignment, God, to be around us and to minister. I pray for your word, God, to be anointed, Lord. I thank you that your word is living, that your word is powerful, that your word is active. And I pray that you would use this time in, the, in your word, use this time in ministry, God, to meet with us, to speak to us, Lord, to bring healing, freedom, deliverance. Lord, you would establish us, God. You would establish us in freedom today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. Isaiah 61, I want to talk about being established in freedom being rooted in freedom, established in freedom. We've been talking the last couple nights about getting set free. We've been talking about different aspects of deliverance, breaking free from demonic influence, breaking free from strongholds, areas where the enemy has gotten a hold in our lives. We've talked about that in the ministry of Jesus and um, different areas of demonic influence. We've had powerful ministry times. It's been great hearing some of you sharing some of the testimonies of what, what God's doing, really encouraging. But I wanna really talk about how do we walk this out? How how do we stay free? How do we walk in freedom? And there's some keys for us here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. This is the passage that Jesus read at the beginning of his ministry. So in Luke chapter 4, we see him quoting this very, very passage. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. We'll, we'll stop there. We, we could keep going here. It's so powerful, but we'll stop, stop there. I love the progression of this passage. I love how it progresses. It starts out by talking about healing and freedom and salvation coming. And he says, that the spirit of the Lord's upon me. He's anointing me to preach good news to the poor. And it's interesting that word poor in the original Hebrew language, it doesn't just mean that you lack finances. It's actually a word that has to do with being downtrodden, with being afflicted, with being oppressed, with being abused, with being marginalized. It's a, it's a word that's a broader word than just meaning that you're financially poor. It actually means you've been beaten down. You've been, you've been, you've been oppressed, you've been afflicted. And so he's saying, I'm coming to bring good news for those that you've been beaten down, those that have been afflicted, those that have been pushed down. He's saying, I come to heal those who have a broken heart. And that word for broken heart, it actually means a soul that has been fractured, a soul that has been damaged. That means our internal being, our mind, our heart, our emotions have been damaged, maybe through trauma, traumatic experiences, maybe through abusive incidences that we've gone through in our lives. It damages our soul. But he says, I've come to bind up the soul that has been broken apart. I've come to bring wholeness to your inside, is what he's saying. I've come to bring wholeness to your mind and to your heart, to heal, to bind up what's been broken inside of you. And then he says, I've come to bring liberty, freedom to those who are captives, 
who've been taken captive, who've been taken prisoner, who've been put in chains, spiritually speaking, opening the prison door for those who are bound. So he goes through this, this list of restoration, of salvation, of healing, of freedom. And I love what he continues to say in verse 3. It says, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. I want you to notice something in this whole progression, that God is not just wanting to remove something. He's wanting to replace it. God doesn't just remove, he replaces he says, I'm not just going to get rid of this, these ashes that have happened, this pile of ashes that have, that have come from. I, I want to replace you with something beautiful. He says, I don't just want to remove the mourning. I want to fill you with joy, the oil of joy instead of mourning, in place of mourning. I don't just want to get rid of the depression and the heaviness. I want you to walk in a garment of praise, a garment of praise. See, he wants to replace it. He wants to replace it. How good is God? That you may be called a tree of righteousness, trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. This speaks of being established, a tree that's been rooted, a tree that's been firmly established and planted and cannot be easily moved. It speaks of being fruitful. And he goes on and says that these same ones, I love this, the same ones that used to be downtrodden, beaten down, oppressed, afflicted, in prison, in chains, the same ones, they will rebuild they will rebuild the old ruins. They will raise up the former desolations, repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Isn't that amazing? I like to say it this way. You get free, you stay free, then you get to set others free. You get free, you get established in freedom, and then you get to set others free. You make the devil wish he never touched your life. You make the devil wish he never put that oppression on you. You make the devil wish he never told that lie. You make the devil wish he never put that bondage around your life. Because now it's payback time. Because now you're restoring what's been beaten down for many generations. You're raising up the cities. You're reaching out to others. I love this progression, and uh, just recently, my wife and I ministered to a young lady that we, actually, it's a, a relative of ours, but we, we, we ministered to her a couple months ago, and deliverance was so new to her. She never heard of, you know, casting out demons and deliverance, and, you know, she was a believer, and she went to a church, but, but they never really taught this or believed this, and, and so it was brand new to her, but she'd been reading my book, and she was learning from it, and so she reached out. We had a phone call with her, and she was dealing with some trauma that had happened in her, her life, and so we were talking on the phone about it. And I said, well, we're going to be in your area in a, in a month or a couple weeks or something like that. Maybe we could pray for you. And so, so we began to uh, set this time up to have a ministry session with her. And um, we, we met with her. We were having conversation and teaching about what deliverance is and, and began to lead her through a prayer of deliverance, just like we've been doing in these evening sessions. We'll do a short version of it today. But begin to lead her through a prayer of deliverance. And we got to a certain part of the prayer about breaking off the, the strongholds and the curses of previous generations. She just all of a sudden burst into tears just spontaneously. It wasn't, I mean, she was just kind of praying through almost methodically, you know, just going through it. And all of a sudden, just, it was like the dam broke and she just began to weep and weep and weep and began to pray for her, began to minister. And she was visibly delivered. There was demons that began to manifest and these demons came out. She could not believe it. She was like, she was like, I mean, I knew you guys weren't like crazy, but man, but this is real. She was like, this is actually real. This is actually happening. I can't believe how free I am. She was just, you know, going on and on. But the, the, the coolest part about it was God continued over the next several weeks to speak to her, to show her areas, to bring freedom in her life. And then within, within a matter of weeks, she's now sharing other, she's telling everybody about it. She was like, I need to, I have a friend and she used to be involved in, you know, the occult and she has to, I'm, I'm going to pray for her. She's now praying for other people for deliverance. She, is, she went from being bound to now ministering deliverance in a matter of weeks. It's incredible to see how God can work that way to establish us in freedom. See, I said this last night. Deliverance is not meant to be an end in itself. Right? It's a beginning. And it frees us to move forward in everything that God has for us. It frees us to move forward into his purposes. 
It frees us so now we can know him better. We can serve him better. We can reach others better. We can fulfill the destiny God has for us. And deliverance can sometimes be progressive. We can have sometimes where, you know, maybe in, in, in certain moments God will, will heal certain areas, free us in certain areas, and then maybe later down the road he wants to touch another area and, um, and, and work through. It can be progressive sometimes. And also deliverance can happen in an encounter and in a process. Freedom can happen in a moment. Freedom can happen also through the, a journey. It's both are important. Both are important. We have those moments of freedom, those moments of breakthrough, those moments of deliverance. But God also works through the course of time, through the process, through the daily walk with him, right? Both of those balance each other out. I told the story last night about my sister who got delivered from, from an eating disorder, after years and years of having an eating disorder, and she got delivered, there was a moment of breakthrough. There was a moment of deliverance where that bondage and that enslavement was no longer in her life. But following that moment and that breakthrough, she literally had to relearn how to eat food. She had to renew her mind about her relationship with food. What was it like as a health, to, to eat in a healthy way, to not have this perspective of food and have it dominate your life and control you? So she was set free, and she never, went, she never fell back into it, but she had to learn. She had to renew her mind. It's the same with any other type of freedom. You can get set free in an area, but then you walk through a journey of walking that out and getting established in freedom, becoming a tree of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. And so when it comes to being established in freedom, I just want to give a couple keys, just a couple pointers. One of the main pointers has to do with the battle for our mind. Because the mind is one of the biggest places of spiritual warfare. The mind is one of the biggest places of, the, of, of battle where the enemy tries to target. So how important is it to renew our minds? You know, Romans 12, we know that verse where it says, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be, re, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You'll be, you, you will be conformed or you will be transformed. Being conformed has to do with an outward pressure that, that, that molds you and shapes you, right? So the pressure of the world system, the pattern of the world, the ways of the world, the mindsets of the world are contrary to God's ways. Transformation happens internally by the renewing of our mind. That means that we're replacing the lies of the enemy with the truth of God's word. That means we are replacing old patterns and mindsets with new patterns and mindsets through the process of time. As we dig into God's word, as we spend time with him, as we see him more clearly, as we know him better, as we worship, as we connect as believers, all that works into the process of renewing our minds. That's a key for staying free. Another key with that is learning to take our thoughts captive. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 talks about the strongholds of the mind. It says, it says that the weapons that we fight with, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, they're not human. It says, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and taking into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Did you know that you can take your thoughts captive? Did you know that you don't have to be subject to every thought that comes into your mind? Amen. See, because the enemy can put thoughts in our heart. The enemy can put thoughts in our mind. Not every thought that you have comes from you. But what we do when that thought comes, that thought of fear, that thought of lust, that thought of pride, that thought of deception, whatever it might be, whatever you are set free from, the enemy might try to knock on the door. Right? He might try to come back and just knock on that door. He might try to, and that shouldn't make us fearful. It should make us vigilant, though. Yeah, shouldn't make us fearful, but it should make us aware to, to know how to stand against and to walk in that freedom. And the more we learn to do that, the more the enemy will start to realize, well, I don't have a place here anymore. I'm going to go somewhere else. Because yeah. I've knocked on that door a handful of times now, and they're not opening up. Nobody's letting me in anymore. Right? The more we can learn to resist, the more we can learn to take that thought captive, the more we can learn to have our mind renewed. That's getting us established in the place of freedom. I've quoted from, from James 4 a couple different times, and I just want to kind of bring this to, to a close here in a couple minutes just by, by emphasizing this one more time. That James, there's a, there's a, a verse, James 4, 7 and 8, where it just gives us a couple, three little pointers and says, 
It says, therefore, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's like a prescription for walking with God, for walking in freedom, for walking in the Lord. Just gives three little simple nuggets there. Therefore, submit yourselves to God. It starts with a heart posture that is yielded to God. That says that Jesus is Lord. Not just lip service, but, but living that way. That your will is submitted to God. That your heart is submitted to God. That your decisions are submitted to God. That means that if you, if you go down a wrong path and the Holy Spirit convicts you, you're quick to repent. You're quick to turn to him. If you stumble into sin, you're quick to confess that. You're not, you're, you're not, you're, you're not walking in darkness. You're not walking away from the Lord. You're yielding to him. That helps us walk in freedom, helps us maintain the freedom because it keeps us in that place, in that posture of walking with him and submitting to him and acknowledging, God, you are God, you are king. Jesus, you are Lord. He's a good Lord. He's a good king. He loves you. He loves us so much. He knows what's best for us. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our submission. So having a heart posture that's yielded to him will help you walk in freedom. Because not, yeah, not only will that help you to get free, it'll help you to stay free. Not only will resisting the devil help you to get free, it'll help you to stay free. Meaning, when that, when that enemy comes back to knock on the door, that it says to resist the devil. That word for resist is a very active word. It means to set yourself against. It means to make him an enemy. It means that you have no agreement with him in your life. I want to live my life and have zero agreement with the devil. I don't want to agree with him about anything. Amen. I want to be in agreement with God. I want to be in agreement with his word, with his counsel, with his spirit, the spirit of truth. So when the enemy comes with a lie, we, 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 we resist him with the truth. Like when the enemy came to Jesus to tempt him, what did he do? He used the truth of God's word to resist him, to stand against him. The sword of the spirit, right? Learning how to resist the enemy, being active in that. Don't be passive in the spiritual battle. Don't just let the enemy do whatever, right? Learn how to use authority. Learn how to use God's word as a sword. There's a reason we're called to have, an ar have armor. And then that last one, that third part, he says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That, to me, is one of the best promises in the Bible. I just, that's such an incredible promise. If we will draw near to him, he will become closer. Now, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. But when him drawing near to us, to me, it means he's revealing himself to us in greater ways. It means that we're knowing him in a more personal way. See, God wants us to know him in a personal way. And he, he, he wants us to draw near as we come to his presence, as we draw near in prayer, in worshiping him and thanking him and waiting upon him and just being still and meditating on his word, digging into his word and reading it and spending that time as we come together in corporate worship and community. We're drawing near to God. And he says, I will draw near to you. And as we do that, as we ask his Holy Spirit to fill us to fill that house with his presence, with his glory. It's like we're creating an atmosphere that repels darkness. It's like, we're, it's like we're being so filled with God's love, with God's truth, with God's light, with God's presence, that we are repelling darkness. And see, if we will do these things, if we learn to renew our minds, we learn to take thoughts captive, we learn to submit ourselves to God, we learn to walk in his ways, we learn to resist the devil, we won't have to actually run around so worried about staying free. We actually will stay free as a byproduct of those areas, of doing those things. See, because Jesus himself is our deliverer. The more we focus on him, he is our deliverer. He is our shepherd. He walks with us through every area and through the process of freedom, and restoration, and then releasing us forward into our purpose, into our destiny. I want us to stand to our feet. We're going to have just a, a brief time of, of response and of, of, of ministry. Those of you are watching on the, on the live stream, I just really want to encourage you to engage 
in this time of prayer. I've had various testimonies of people that were set free even just through praying on a live stream or watching a video or praying through. So I just encourage you, if you're at your home right now, if you're watching on the live stream, engage in this time and pray along. How many people are here in this room that have not been at any of the services yet this weekend? This is your first time this weekend. Just raise your hand up just so I can engage. Okay, several. Awesome, okay, good, good. Good to have you with us. So what I want to do is I want to lead us through a prayer to do just that. Submit to God and resist the devil. And then we'll do a couple minutes of just drawing near and asking his Holy Spirit to fill us. So this is going to be kind of a condensed version of a deliverance prayer. We're going to pray through it for a few minutes. I'm going to lead you through it. And then I'm going to pray for you for a couple minutes. And then once we dismiss, if there's anyone that wants to come and get prayer, I'll turn it to you and um, lead that time. So Father... I'm just going to pray for a minute. God, I ask for your spirit to move through this time. God, let your Holy Spirit fall in this room. Let your Holy Spirit come upon us. God, let that same anointing of Isaiah 61, Lord, that was just preached and released here, let that same anointing, God, fall in this room, Lord, upon the hearts and minds of those in this place, God, upon those that are watching on the live stream, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit move, God, even through the live stream, God, into the homes of people. Let the presence of God be tangible. God, I pray for your holy angels to be sent on assignment, Lord, to minister. I declare open heavens in this place, God. Because of your blood, Jesus. Because you finished the work, Lord. Thank you, God. So I'm going to lead us in a time of just submitting ourselves to God and honoring him first. Let's pray. I'm going to pray out loud. I'll have you follow me. Just pray after me. Pray out loud with faith, with authority. Thank you, God. Pray this out. Say, Heavenly Father, Father, I come into your holy presence presence. by the precious blood of Jesus. I honor you. you. You are the one true living God. You are the creator. I submit my life to you. And I submit to Jesus as my Lord. I want every part of my life to be in agreement with you. I want to walk in your ways, in your truth. In your love, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I say, my life belongs to you. I yield myself to you in the name of Jesus. Now I want us to take a couple minutes just in your own words, if you need to just yield something to God. If there's an area of your life, just as Stephen plays in the background, if there's areas where you need to turn to him, you need to maybe repent of something or forgive somebody. Just begin right now and just in this minute or two just to pray those things out to submit your life to God. God, we submit ourselves to you. God, we turn away from anything that is contrary to you, God. We cast down every idol, every unholy thing we turn from. God, we ask for your cleansing, your forgiveness by the power of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, move through this place. Anything you need to turn over to him and repent of, just yield it to him right now in the name of Jesus. Now let's keep praying this out. Now we're going to resist the devil right now. We're going to pray a prayer of just resisting the enemy, resisting the devil commanding him to flee from our lives. So I want you to say this out. Say, Lord Jesus, I renounce the kingdom of darkness and everything related to it. I renounce sin. I turn away from it. I renounce every unclean spirit that's part of the kingdom of darkness. And I declare that Jesus is my Lord. And by the authority of Jesus' name, I speak to every evil spirit that has any influence in my life. And I command you to come out. Go in the name of Jesus. 
Now just lift your hands to the Lord for a minute and pray over you. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray the power of the Holy Spirit, God, to complete the work, Lord. God, it's by your spirit, Lord. It's by your power. It's by your grace, Lord. Let the power of the Holy Spirit complete the work, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I break the power of every demonic assignment from your life. I command it to be loosed to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of oppression to come out right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Spirit of depression, come out in the name of Jesus. Go right now. You come out from the people in the name of Jesus. I break the power of that spirit of fear. Come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of fear leaves the people now, out from the people now, in the name of Jesus. I break the power of every chain of bondage and oppression. I command that spirit of addiction, come out in the name of Jesus. That spirit of affliction comes out now in Jesus' name. I break its power from your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I command that spirit of heaviness, spirit of heaviness, Come out in the name of the Lord Jesus right now. Every spirit of despair and depression, that spirit of hopelessness comes out from the people right now. Leave them right now in Jesus' name. I break the power of every spirit that came in through abuse and through trauma. It comes out right now. It comes out right now in Jesus' name. It leaves their lives. It leaves them now. It leaves them now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. God, I bless what you're doing in this place, Lord. I bless what you're doing in this room. I thank you, Lord, that you're lifting burdens, you're healing hearts, God. Let that anointing that heals the broken heart fall in this place, Lord. Lord, let your Holy Spirit minister to the hearts and minds of those in this room, Lord, where there's been brokenness. I speak wholeness. I speak to the hearts and mind. I say, be whole in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Be made whole. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now we're just going to take one minute to draw near to God. I just want you to draw near to Him. Just come into His presence. Just give him, begin to give Him thanks. Thank you, God, for what you've done. Thank you for what you're, how you're moving and what you're doing. You're so good, God. We just draw near. God, would you, as we draw near to you, would you make your presence even more real? You are here, Jesus. Would you just minister in a tangible way? Thank you, God, for freedom, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. Just put your hand on your heart and say this out. Say, Heavenly Father, I draw near to you, and I thank you that you draw near to me. I ask you to fill my heart and fill my life with your Holy Spirit. And lead me to walk in your freedom and to walk in the purpose you have for me. I receive a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Now let's just wait upon him just for 30 seconds. Just be still and wait upon him and let him draw near to you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We honor you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We just receive all that you're doing. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And um, at this time, if you have other obligations, you, you're welcome to leave. You're dismissed. However, after the service right now, we're just going to be having an extended time of prayer and of ministry where Pastor Jake is going to be praying individually for members, of, members, not just members of our congregation, but if you're a visitor for everyone. This is a time for you to be set free from oppression and to learn to walk in freedom. And so we're just, this is a time for you. So I, I encourage you to stay. Um, if you do need to leave, though, please check out Jake's books in the lobby. They're on sale. And um, if you're watching us online, 
um, if you're watching us online, would you just subscribe to our channel? Here we're about sharing Jesus. And we just determined that's the best, one of the best ways to share Jesus with, with people around the world. Um, we're just so blessed to have Jake here again. Let's just continue in this attitude of worship, continue in this attitude of submission to God and seeing what he has for us. Amen. God bless you.